So good night, ladies. We have a gent. We have David joining us in a minute, but we decided to start anyway because we were having such a good chat about everything. I thought, let's just start and David can join when he's ready. Um, so good morning to you, Medina, in Australia. And good Hi. afternoon to you, Bryce, in Atlanta. How are you both doing? Good. Excellent. Yeah, I had an inspiring dream or something because I woke up feeling really exuberant. So, so that was great. <laughs> Bryce and I were talking before you joined about dreams. It seems like we're all having really off the scale dreams at the moment. And it'd be interesting to hear for those of you in the audience. And I know we talk about this a lot, but I've noticed the dreams that I've been having recently have been very, very different um because they're not places that i can place or recognize so normally in my dreams i do sort of travel off and do all sorts of adventures but they've definitely shifted over the last week or so have you two noticed that yes and you know the native yes. americans used to say one of the tribes here used to say that um when you went to sleep you you, you live two lives you live your life here in our waking reality and then you live your life in your dream space and I was telling you ladies, and I, I've been a little bit more open about this on my channel. I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder quite a few years ago, went through trauma therapy. But one of the things that I realized was at that point, I was having nightmares like every night. I would have night terrors where you, I would get, I'd run out of bed in the middle of the night. I had to lock my bedroom door. And I had that since I was like in the eighth grade. So this has been going on for most of my life. I just thought it was something people dealt with. But apparently that's a sign of complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Anyway, that taught me, though, how important our sleeping state actually is. And I was saying to you, ladies, I think sometimes we're given information at night um, to kind of soften the blow, uh, if, not soften the blow in a bad way, but with stuff that maybe we can't, we have a hard time accepting in our logical brain. Mm. Um, that, that, that the matrix brain that's been kind of conditioned for us that, that maybe God source, uh, your guides kind of give you information in dream space that you can then take into your waking state to help your mind shift around the shifting reality. Cause that's what we know is happening, right? Our reality is shifting reality. Yeah. Is shifting. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I think that, um, subconsciously, unconsciously, we have these dreams often to be able to process or integrate information that we can't do in a conscious state because it's just too confronting, too intimidating. You know, it's too challenging to be able to do that um, in, in a conscious mind. So it's like, it, like you say, it softens the blow and it just sort of allows us to, to do it in a way that is manageable for us. And um, I think that happens often with things. I mean, um, with everything we're, we're navigating in the world at the moment, I'm sure everyone can relate to that with dreams um that are helping us to process you know everything that's happening around us yeah and so much of the time also i mean you know everyone goes through different stages of what they dream about how much they remember and everything but um in terms of also yes about processing and also about giving us new information because quite often in your waking hours you're quite often in in headspace or doing or sort of being and then when you're in that sleep slate, depending on what sort of level of brainwaves you're in and what stage of sleep you're in, it opens you up to receiving a whole new world of information from the universe. Yep, absolutely. Yes. You're more open. There's not a lot of boundaries. And in, in, um, I mean, how many people have had dreams about uh, flying, you know, yeah. or, um, you know, it, 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 you, you're, you're open to these boundless possibilities when, when actually – you know, I know we've talked about the fact that they tell us we have junk DNA, which we know that's not true, you know? And mm -hmm. so what, what are we capable of? You know, we, and I was just telling you guys, like, you know, this moving into this new earth, some possibilities of what lie ahead has be have, have almost been unbelievable to me, but then I had to settle back into that and realize, no, that's because you've been put, there's been limits put on your thought by, by the system by every, yeah. even, even people who didn't mean to do that, your parents, your school, you know, good hearted people that are just trying to keep you in again in reality. But, but what is reality? You know, it's nothing but an illusion. 
And so this is one my dream. I, I, I can exactly think about what you're saying here because my dream was uh, one of great inspiration and creativity. <laughs> and, you know, that, that came through the dream state. And then I woke up and I thought, wow, you know, I can do this and I can do this and I can write this book and I can do this and da, da, da. <laughs> and all this stuff kept flowing in. And that was a really positive dream that, that brought through all that inspiration that is not in our conscious state. We, we have limitations and restrictions on what we think we can do. And, and so I think that's another really positive aspect of dreaming that, that the, the divine downloads to us, um, which is also our higher self, you know, these incredible possibilities. It's yeah. a, there's a, a Henry uh, Ford quote here. And I don't know if Henry Ford was a good guy or a bad guy from Ford cars, but his quote was great. He said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Mm. Yeah, and so much of, of what, how we're taught to deal with things is actually keeping us in the trauma state. I mean, everyone's got different um, experiences of different therapies and different things will work for different people at different stages in their life and based on what they've gone through. But I've, it's always fascinated me by how much is about looking back. Um, and I've personally experienced with myself and with people I know and actually with animals being able at a quantum level to change the physical instantaneously when that belief system is there. So we were speaking a bit earlier about, before we press record, about, um, you know, when I, as a biologist, I was taught at university that nerves can't regenerate. And now we know that's not true. So, you know, whether you take, there's a lot of science bashing at the moment, but, you know, science at its core is just asking questions and then going out to see whether those questions give you a yes or a no and to keep asking the questions, which is a bit about it I love. But if you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to be led down the right pathway. And so much of what we do, I think, for me, I really find it fascinating how we're really pushed to look back rather than concentrate on the forward and what else is possible. Yeah. It's about timelines too, isn't it, Catherine? Like, you know, there are quantum timelines that we can we can hop on and it's like um, you, you're given a, a potential um, opportunity and which road, which path you're going to take. So um, the highest timeline or, or a more, um, you know, pedestrian uh, timeline that, that is something that perhaps is what you're used to or familiar with. So um, when you're able to sort of step out of your comfort zone and reach for something higher, you can actually draw in a higher a timeline and, and step onto that so that's all about the quantum potential mm. that's, it's so funny I was just thinking about that today Medina that you brought that up and that, I mean excuse my language but it's to think about that is such a mind fuck sometimes you think about all the choices and they've made mm. movies about this of course they tell us this in movies but all the choices you make in your life and how you know, going this way or that way, like is going to totally change the trajectory of, of, of you. And I do believe we all have a Dharma and I do believe we're already always kind of pushed back to the path. We agreed to our soul contract that we agreed to take, but how things like shift and flux and, and, um, and I, you know, it's, it's interesting, like even boards, like the Cassiopeian board, the Pleiadian board, a lot of times they talk about how they can't they can give you a percentage of what's going to happen, but they can't give you an exact number because there's so many factors that are involved yeah. in, in, in this, in, in the, the, uh, cause and effect. It's like the butterfly effect, you know, a butterfly flaps its wings in Africa and it has something that affects something happening in New York city and how everything is so interconnected. And isn't it mm -hmm. crazy to think about that, that even, I mean, we know this, we know this, but how powerful our thoughts are even in that timeline oh. shift. Yes, totally. I was going to lead into that. So oh, it's like we're, we're actually reading each other's minds here, I reckon. <laughs> so I was just going to say that because thoughts are the seed of our words, which are the seed of our actions. And so how powerful are our thoughts and our words and our actions, which are even one simple word can create a timeline. And when you actually think of the ramifications of that, Oh my gosh, it makes you want to be extremely mindful of everything that we are um, thinking, saying, and, and then which leads to action. Yeah, absolutely. It actually creates our thoughts as well and our emotions and our feelings. Uh, sort of because, for example, when you're communicating with animals, you realize that your thoughts are quite far down the process. 
Um, so they come quite late in the game in terms of really in that uh, in a knowing and awareness that you've asked the question long before you become consciously aware of it as a thought, mm -hmm. which is why sometimes when you're doing telepathy, whether it's with another human or another species, the answer or channel, some people say this about channeling, the answer comes to you before you've even consciously asked the question or got halfway through it because some yeah, of yeah. Our processes in terms of sort of energy transfer are actually quite slow and they can measure things happening in your brain before we are consciously aware that we've had that thought. Yes, I, I, that happened to me yesterday because um, I, I brought through a poem because somebody sent me an incredible poem and then I um, was really inspired. It was about their way of um, processing and understanding what was happening in the world around them right now. And then I thought, wow, that, what a great idea. I'm going to write, write a poem too. So I thought about, you know, something that I had difficulty processing. Then I wrote a poem and then I felt really inspired by that. And then we, I did my soul healing group on, on Zoom last night with our wonderful group that do like energy healing for us. Australia and um, the whole topic of what we discussed was about what the poem I'd written about but they'd already previously um, organized the presenters what they were going to present but it all tied in we all had the same theme and it all came together and you know I'd like to later share the poem with you but um, it was amazing because um, somehow we'd all interconnected way before the session happened and it was all the same topic and that happens every week actually it all synchronizes and ties together even though we don't know individually what each other are doing. We've talked. Sorry, carry on. Not to say that's just so that gives me chills. Like that's just it's amazing. Like human beings are freaking amazing. You know, yes. look how easily that can be manipulated because we've spoken so many times before about the mind control that's going on at various different levels. You know, some really extreme with the MK Ultra side of things, and some um, more subliminal with television and and everything in between. When you start understanding these things, you realize it's like every single tool can be used for the good or for the bad you know it's not the tool it's not the process it's not the um quantum physics itself that's inherently good or bad it, it's the intent of how it's being used yeah and that's why we have to really up the ante with our own um, ability to manifest for the light and you know the positive because they're using it on the other end so, so we need to get a bit more cluey and work out how to, you know, utilise all these gifts and skills and abilities we have to co-create for the positive um, that, that perhaps before we, we had been unaware of. Do you know, good ladies, and I was not even planning on bringing this up, but I feel like I need to, and I hope I'm, I'm going to be paraphrasing, so I hope I'm saying this accurate. So I think it was today on the Cassiopeia board, um, they spoke about... Uh, that a lot of the souls that are here right now were from Atlantis and did indeed go through the cataclysm of Atlantis. And I think we know that what is happening right now mimics what happened with the cataclysm where they had a, a group of elite people that were, you know, doing this thing to other people. And, and it, yeah, we have to be careful what we say, but, um, but anyway, that we are now, because we came back now, our thought memory, our in our in our template is what cat put this this up, uh, this whole great awakening in a in a, a convolted us or pushed us into this. That we, because we remember that in our soul essence, is why this is happening, even though we, we're not consciously aware of it. But this time the tables are going to get turned be for the better of humanity. Hi, David. <laughs> um, hi, David. I was going to say to guys. my friend the other day, was, was water was rising and I was trying to um, com um, work out how I was going to escape the water rising. So that's very much Atlantean with this, the, the water level rising. And I was trying to work out how to um, be able to avoid, you know, going under with the water. So that, that's completely everything that you're saying. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Dave. We were just off you and we couldn't wait. We were talking about so many fun things. We couldn't wait to start. So we started without. No, it's okay. It's my fault. I made my alarm. Because last time we did it on Friday morning, yeah. I just turned it on. You know how on your phone you can, you can set different times? So I just said, I just turned it on and didn't realize that I turned it on the wrong day. So I had the right intention. 
but it's early it was, for uh, you. It's totally <laughs> fine. It's early for you. Talking about dreams and dream state and sort of things. But going back to the Atlantic theme that we were just talking about, I mean, Bryce, you and I have spoken about this before, that I've always, always known I was in Atlantis and, and always had such, I mean, I thought I would almost say I've had more um what I, to me, are conscious memories of growing up in Atlantis than I have. But when people say, well, tell me things about your childhood, this current childhood, I can't remember a lot, but I can remember so much about my life on Atlantis. But everyone else, apart from you guys, when I talk about this, just think I'm a complete nutter and I'm completely making it up. But to I me, totally agree. I totally agree, Catherine. <laughs> I can't remember I could literally life when I was younger. I can't remember anything. It's all other stuff that I remember, like you're talking about. Yeah, I'm totally on the same page with you there. <laughs> I think I only talk to you guys. So, other I don't know, know, so. So. <laughs> have our own little mad cup and this is one of the things that we were we were going to discuss today is like so much of we're having this conversation now today guys and um it wasn't long ago before no one would want to listen into this no one people would think you're completely mad and we were talking about the link between the the spiritual conversations and how it's so mainstream now and a lot of people's awareness and conversations and things that you wouldn't you might be lucky to have one person in your life that you could talk to about these things. Now there's loads of us out there that are talking like this. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, the other night I was, I, I had the pleasure of watching Taylor uh, do a channeling session and, and uh, with that we've talked, we've talk, spoken about this on the, on the show before, but she channeled in a very uh, interesting person. I won't say who, but this person, this entity, this was explaining uh, Atlantis and he said, and he kind of, kind of backed what I read on the Cassiopeia board today, that that was a that was Noah's Ark, the flood, that was the flood of Atlantis that ended one timeline and put us on another. And that was like the apocalypse. And that's, and then the Cassiopeian saying that a bunch of us that survived, well, didn't survive that we were crashed out, came back now. And just our soul template consciousness is what's propelled us into, we're basically doing the same thing now that happened then, except then the negative side, the bad guys got control. Now, if you read the law of one, it's very clear that a fourth density negative planet cannot survive for long because there is no harvesting of creativity. There's no harvesting of love. They're just sabotaging. So it implodes on itself. And that's why Atlantis went down. Well, this time here we are, we're back. And this entity was saying that this is the end of this timeline and there will be another flood except for it will not be water. It will be energy. It will be a flood of energy that's going to come forth, which I think is the, 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 the end of that 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 tunnel of coming into the age of Aquarius that we're in right now, which elevates everyone because the positive is what's going to end up dominating this timeline, if that makes sense. Although dominating doesn't seem like a very positive word, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> yes. And I can't emphasize the importance of creativity. And we'll talk to Dave about this because I know he's so creative. But um creativity is such an inspiration to catalyze that that energy forward. And I tell you, I mean I wrote this poem yesterday and it had so many incredible um I didn't realize how powerful it was to have so many um incredible um sort of results or, or things that happened just from writing one little poem and 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 it inspired so much and it catalyzed an, a brilliant day and amazing dreams and I just feel so inspired now just from one little poem so you know when we tap into our creativity and we bring that into the world it really pushes us in the direction um forward you know accelerates our our, our growth I think and um so I'd love to um, inspire people to whatever they do that's creative for them to just really engage in that at the minute because it it it, it creates universes it really does uh, Dave tell us about your wonderful creativity I know you're very creative <laughs> yeah thanks Medina uh, I think I really think that creativity can take so many different forms like we're, we're all we all think of creativity as something like art, you know something artistic or writing or movies or music, but I, it's, you know, business is a creative venture as well. You, you're building something from nothing, you know, uh, whatever that is. Even obviously carpentry, all those kinds of things are, they're all creative in nature. But, and, and I think everybody's creative in their own right, but we just need to figure out what that thing is for us. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, 
being creative and tapping into that into that side of you which perhaps many people didn't even know existed i know i didn't for a long time is it really just changes your life in so many ways because you it takes you to a higher vibration it's what you came here to do it's what your heart wants and that's the biggest thing that we should all be giving ourselves especially now because it's going to raise the vibration of the entire planet do you so think that women have a better ability in that way? Oh, sorry. Do you think that women have a better ability in that way than men, that men perhaps suppress that more than women, that, that tapping into their creativity? Uh, or do, Because of the way culture and society yeah. set up, you know, they're encouraged to you know, go to work and do all this and, and hold that space. Do, do, do it's you possible. Think that, it's possible. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah it, it's definitely possible. I, I wouldn't say... One, one way or the other but yeah it's definitely a possibility considering the way that they've they've conditioned all of us you know mm. and and especially they've you know they've attacked men for so long you know in in many ways i would say that creativity is one of those things but i think they've attacked everybody's creativity yeah i mean i would say you know when you look at what they've done with the feminist movement and things like this but one of the things i wanted to lead on to is i hate these discussions about what they've done for me i'm so over that I'm so over, um, and I know we've all got to go through things at different times, and probably I'm so over it because I spent the last year talking about it, and so it's been like my therapy. Yeah. But I see so much of, of us still, um, as a collective, being talking to they've done this with me. I mean, I had a chat with Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa and a lovely lady called Wendy Smith today, and we were talking about control and and these perceived sort of barriers that are put on you or we think they they are controlling aspects of your life and tools and techniques to take it back and i think it's really again it ties into creativity it's like we can be creative in every single thing that we do i mean my main creativity you should see me when i'm cleaning out my guinea pigs I'm so creative about how I put their beds back and how I enhance their environment and, and things like that. It, it's like it can be absolutely anything, as you said, David, can't it? Mm. Yeah, that's a good point that you made first of, of, of moving away from that kind of speech. And I think it's very important. That's kind of what, I, what I'm doing now with, with where I'm taking my, my channel is what I spoke to you about before and I haven't told Bryce or Medina about it, but I'm going to be starting this podcast where I only speak to, uh, where I, not only, but where I speak to people like artists and musicians and filmmakers and uh, and writers, because that's they're the kinds of conversations I want to have. And I'm, I'm done with having those conversations, like I'm, I'm sure you all are as well, uh, of having those conversations where you just talk about what's happening in your city or what's what's going to happen next, what we're we all kind of con you know thinking about. You want to have uh, different conversations where conversations that move people forwards in in any way really oh yeah absolutely i'm setting up a community platform for people to um help them energetically but also to support them in their divine soul mission going forward so it's about creating um the new ways that we can go forward on the planet with 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 higher um sort of templates and 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 better ways of 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 um, creating um, a world for everybody. So I totally agree with that. I think I think it's the, the energy is coming in for that now where we're wanting to create um, new things that haven't been here before. You know, it's so yeah. funny. Um, I lately have been finding the, uh, the bad guys to be quite comical. Mm -hmm. um, I just find myself <laughs> cracking up at things because they're so pathetic. And that just shows like how much we've ris risen up as human beings. And so I get it, like not wanting to, to dwell on what they've done, but because now they're nothing. And that's because we, that's because of us, like we are the storm. And because we rose our, we and, and so I agree with you guys, but it's funny. One thing I will say, I saw this on uh, social media and I thought it was hysterical talking about being creative. So, you know, when you get on an airplane now, you have to the whole time. And so the rule on this airline was if you were eating though, you didn't have to, so this guy took a video of a guy that put a french fry in his mouth and literally like held a french fry in his mouth the whole time, the whole flight. <laughs> I, was, I, I, was, I, was, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, 
slow clap for you, my friend. Like that is awesome. He kept the French fry in his mouth the whole entire time. Like he was, like he was smoking. It. That's really funny. I, I saw this other fantastic post too that was hysterical. Crack up! It was about this person talking about. Yes, I totally agree with mandatory vacations. <laughs> and they just did this whole article on mandatory vacations. <laughs> Isn't it funny though? Because we were we were sort of talking about a few of the topics that we've already covered about doing the work and 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 actually sitting there and working through your shit basically whatever it is and that's just going to go up and down like a yo-yo for all sorts of people and sometimes something might hit you really hard and other times it might be little daily things that can push you off but that's why one of the most fun we've all had because we have it's almost been like reality tv we've we've got on here and we've been able to talk out all these issues for me, I feel personally, it's moved me forward so much quicker just being able to have these conversations with you guys because the things that normally I'd be having the conversations in my head and I might get stuck in a bit of a cycle. And I know some of our listeners haven't necessarily um, had such access to people like that to do it, but we, we have a lot of time. And I would just say whoever you can find to sort of – have these conversations and talk it through it does help so much doesn't it oh absolutely i'm setting up a platform for that with a spiritual community so they will be like-minded so if people are feeling alone they can contact me about that because i've had a lot of people asking me a lot of clients saying they're feeling isolated and alone and how can they connect to other like-minded people so that was one of the inspirations and the other was that you know people really wanting to step into their divine soul purpose now their, their mission um they're feeling very activated but they're not sure how to move forward with that so they're, they're the two main things people have been mentioning to me lately mm. And my friend, our friend, Stephanie, um, who has the channel Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, and her whole, her, her whole thing is like, you know, waking up from the matrix of, of religion. And, re, and for her, like me, that's kind of what I've been doing with the missing books of the Bible. My, my faith in, in God and source has only grown, gone, grown stronger as the uh, matrix of religion has crumbled. And she started a support group um, for people coming out of religion, but I've, I've hopped in on some of these support groups she runs and it's literally open for anybody that just needs friends, you know, cause so many people are very isolated. And I feel, I mean, I really feel like, I mean, this whole timeline switch has not been comfortable for all of us, but I feel very lucky in my life. Cause I'm in a state that's like not, I'm in a conservative state. So, you know, you go outside of Atlanta and it's just back to normal. You know, I'm not restricted by any type of um, mm. crazy leader, you know, and and um, I, I work from home. So I'm not having to go under the jurisdiction of, of uh, someone else. So there's been a lot that I've been able to kind of slide by, whereas I know so many people are just feeling really alone. So I love that you brought that up. So I and my on my channel, I'll put Stephanie's email address for those groups. If you guys, the Americans are, I think we do have some people from some other countries as well. But I know time time zones are, are an issue. But yes, yes. And I, I love all of my subscribers. I feel like they're family. I hate even calling them subscribers because I love the conversations they all have in the comment section. It's 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 awesome and they're they're all like friends with each other. And I just love seeing everybody support each other. It's such a beautiful thing to see. And so, you know, when um, your mum used to tell you, and OK, it might be your dad or, or a teacher, or whatever, if you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say it. And there's a big difference, isn't it? I'd love your opinion on it's OK to discuss things. We've talked about this before, but it's so important to be able to discuss things and not have to agree on them. But you can still, if you're saying it, like you mentioned, David, coming from your heart space, it just puts the whole conversation on a different footing, doesn't it? And I think people are getting really good at doing that now. If, if, you, yeah. if you can't say something positive, you can ask Archangel Gabriel to come and word it in a way that is going to be constructive. Um, if you don't know how to do it yourself, just ask Archangel Gabriel to help. What, 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 what do you think, Dave? How, how do you get... How do you encourage people to um, speak um, constructively and positively? Well, I think there's a lot of self-awareness that comes with that kind of thing because you need to, the, both people, need to be at a point where it's okay that, that they're okay with somebody not agreeing with them. Because I've had conversations with the people where it might not even be the biggest thing, but you disagree with somebody and they kind of get a little bit defensive or a little bit annoyed at you. 
because they think that perhaps you're attacking, I guess that they think that you're attacking them in some way or you don't, uh, you know, like them, I guess, and maybe for a lack of a better term. But yeah, I, I think it's, it's definitely important and healthy to have those kinds of conversations uh, where you don't necessarily agree with everyone because that's, that's a bit silly. Otherwise, if, if everybody agreed with everybody, we'd be kind of on this, in this trajectory where, you know, we, we can see what's happening would be happening on a much larger scale. But That's what makes life interesting, doesn't it? When we have different uh, views and opinions and everyone is unique. Otherwise, if you're all the same, it'd be so boring. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, something I wanted to add about what, what you guys were talking about before, um, which I can't remember now. So I will, uh, <laughs> I'm sure it will come to me. Just butt in when it does, because you know with us three, you just have to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel shy, we won't take offence. But no, it's just, it's just um, I've noticed, I mean, it's so, these things are so obvious. I mean, none of what I say is ever, like, groundbreaking at all. So obvious, but when, when you... When you were Good to be reminded, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just so different. So I think the reason we can have such great conversations together is because we're all coming to it from a genuinely wanting to hear the other person's point of view. Where sometimes, whether it's someone you've known for a long while in your life or a family member or someone you've got preconceived ideas about, you perhaps start the conversation off with a different energy. And we all know that we've all got sort of possibly family members that think differently about things. I mean, you know, if my sisters heard me talking about my memories of Atlantis, they would cart me off to the loony bin, <laughs> which they've tried. I'm sure they want to do that anyway. But it's so important how we bring ourselves to the table and how we bring ourselves to life, every conversation, every interaction. I remember what it is now. Self. That's the thing, being your authentic David. self. Hang on, David's Christine remembered. Christine. Hang on, Medina, David's remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday, yesterday I cancelled my gym membership. Or I emailed them because they're going to bring in 31st of January here. Is going to be the day where they they do all the things. You know, they shut us out really from from society. And and the guy said, "Would well, you want to put it on hold and it will give you a bit of time to get your certificate together?" And I said, "No, it's okay. Can you just can you just cancel it? This will be my notice to cancel it. I'm not going to. I'm not getting it." And he goes, "Oh, good on you for sticking to your guns." And and I just find that funny. I was talking to Dale about it. Um, it's funny that people congratulate you on certain things that that they're not doing. You know, yeah, like I'm sure he wants to do it. I, I'm sure he wants to. And most people want to do it. You know, how many people are, are doing the things they don't want to do right now because of their job? And I get it. You know, um, but I'm similar to you, Bryce, and and both of you and and Catherine Medina. Where I work from home, and I put myself into a position where I'm not getting a lot of the pressure that most people are. You know. Uh, but we, but at the end of the day, we all have to make the same decisions. You know, I'm making a decision to get shut out from all the things that, you know, all those other things that, that I won't be able to access. But I just mm -hmm. thought it was quite interesting that people, it's I kind of liken it to giving up a bad habit, whatever that may be. You know, people are they're really, they're, they're supportive and congratulatory, but they're not, it's not something that they're doing themselves, you know. It's your ability to stand your ground too. I mean, my son, he's the one, only one around him, all his... Um, ones around him have had this and he hasn't had it. So he says he can't go to nightclubs and different things like that. But um, he's he's standing in his truth and he's, he's standing strong and he's only young and I'm so proud of him. So it's it's that ability to sort of know your own truth and, and, and be able to hold that in the midst of external pressure. And um, I think that that's a great skill that we can all um, develop at the moment. As simple as saying, no, you know, I do not consent. It takes bravery. Mm. It takes a lot of courage mm. and a lot of bravery. And and I don't say that with any ego because, like I said, I'm at home all day, so it's not like I'm having to, like, face any battles on a daily basis. And I live in a conservative state, so who cares? But a lot of these people, especially the ones I see, like, and you, you guys are in a very different situation in your countries than I am in mine. And I, I'm just so impressed by how resilient and brave, especially young people, because – when you're our age getting, you know, towards your, your midlife as we are in the matrix now, it's, you know, it's not as hard to be brave because you've had the life I've done the nightclubs. I've done all that stuff, but to be that young and to be right. that courageous, mm -hmm. that's impressive. And I applaud all the young kids that are actually giving up 
I don't know what I would have done at 20, 21, 22 years old. I have, I'm a totally different person now. I have no idea how I would have reacted in this situation back then. And so that's really impressive for kids that young, that young adults that are able to kind of like do that. So it speaks a lot of bravery. And also about how, um, where they get that, um, where we all get that sort of thi- that um, questioning thing. So, for example, we we've spoken before. My daughter went to America for a year to university on a, a soccer scholarship, and she was told that not just the recent one of this was compulsory, but also the flu, the chicken pots, all this other stuff. And it was in black and white. It was like it's compulsory. You have to have them. And you couldn't get medical. I mean, you can't get a doctor over here for love or money to give you a medical exemption. I tell you, you have to literally be killed by it first before they'll give you one. But she did it. She did it. Because for her, it's like, I've spoken about Joe Dispenser a lot, but when you put those non-negotiable boundaries of your core values, when you start, when there's something that is not negotiable, sometimes those barriers really do drop away. Not always. I'm not saying always. But it's amazing how a lot of them do go away when you absolutely are energetically putting that message out to the universe, no. Because everyone was like, oh, you won't be able to do that. And she was like, well, you know, four backwards and forwards of emails and I've done it. Thank you. Because she was very much, no, this is going to be okay. I'm going to get this sorted. And she did. And it, it was just such a lesson, really, in terms of, perseverance and really sticking to those boundaries and actually being non-negotiable about it because if you're if you're wavering on the fence you're putting that energy out there into the universe aren't you yeah i i i'm in a state which everyone has been wearing these quite a lot and as soon as i moved here i i just had really really clear in my head i'm never 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 going to wear one of those because it totally uh, offends my inner um integrity and um I've, I've never been questioned nobody said anything to me once um never worn one um never had an issue because it's it's not in my um it's not in my conscience, consciousness that that's going to happen or going to be an issue and, and just never has, which is unusual, you know, for where I am. So, and I have to say with your kids too, one thing, Catherine, that is, um, that is a reflection of how well you parented because it took me in my early 30s going to trauma therapy to even learn what a freaking boundary was. You know, the fact that, that you've raised your kids to know that they can say no, that there is, that's, that's that that's you guys i mean that's an applaud to both you guys for raising your kids that way to understand their power to understand that they have that autonomy you know this is my body this is my life and i will i will say yes or no to these things that are going to affect me you know and so that's that's a, a, a hands up to you guys because that's amazing because i don't at 21, 20 years old, I don't think I would have absolutely, well, I know, I, I didn't know what boundaries were. I had no idea what boundaries were. No one had ever taught me that. So great. My parents, I love my parents, but this is why I would say my hair, le- my halos around my ankles with my knickers, <laughs> <laughs> which was always my favorite going out with the girls. So I'm not really like that, but it makes me giggle still. But it's funny. Now, this brings up something really important about whether it's children, whether it's animals. Um, I was talking to Shanti today about, you know, you don't put it, put out into the universe what you don't want to happen. Because for me, like a lot of the time, I hadn't had those actual conscious conversations. With this one, we did, because we were like, mm. but um, it's, it's, you cannot act in one way and say something else, can you? It just that the universe doesn't work like that. You've got to actually take responsibility for yourself. And you're so right. It gets so much easier as you get older, doesn't it? Definitely. Not care yes. as much. Yeah, it totally. Does. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, it's a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> somebody's very, somebody who's very close to me, uh, who who now sees the light and sees all the BS for what it is, uh, is not getting the thing, but because they just announced the mandate again here a couple of days ago, and it's weird they didn't. They didn't uh, put an end date on it. Usually they say, okay, it's for the next five days, the next week or whatever, and then they extend it. You know, it's always always extended a couple of times, but they didn't even announce one. And now they've come out and said, well, it might be for the end of winter that you have to wear them. 
And that's like six months away or more. No, like nine months away. So it's a long time. Um, but my point is, is that uh, the person that I'm speaking about, who, who knows it's all BS, I'm like, well, what are you going to do? I, I said this to this person a few weeks, a few months ago. Like, what are you going to do if it's they're here, they're here to stay forever? And they couldn't answer me. And then now that they've extended it to possibly the end of winter, which will be, they mean forever, don't mm-hmm. they? They don't mean they don't mean to the end of winter. I said, well, it's not going. Nothing's going to change. And they go, well, maybe I'll just wear it when when I go out. So no, you can't wear it at all. I like, you understanding. Like you just can't do it. You any a little bit of compliance is more than enough. Like is you just can't. But I can tell that there's an internal conflict there, and it's you know it's like it. There, I guess, a bit of Stockholm syndrome. Right? Yes, yeah, that's that trauma, and and I believe that once. That we know because we know that we're we're heading into a beautiful future. So I don't even think anything's going to last until the end of your winter, which would be like the beginning of our fall. Because I think it's all going to be flipped by then. But think about and I've, right. I've joked about this before. Even for us who are have our channels, like we're going to need some therapy as well because <laughs> this is, there has been some drama, you know. But you think about all the like the the, the normal the people that are you know watching MS. You know, they're, they're going to need a lot of help because there is, it, it, there is, and you're right, there's a lot of Stockholm syndrome happening right now. And it's, it, it's just, it's mind boggling to see, just to see it, to see like you're literally siding with the person that is, or the entity, the organization that's abusing you. Like this is unbelievable, but it is, and they've done it so perfectly. It's been so meticulously mm-hmm. planned out for generations. And you were talking that, about that before you signed on, David, I think even before we hit record, about how long, mm-hmm. like what we got from our parents who got from their parents and how this this process, I mean, even here in the United States, I did a deep dive into the Federal Reserve a long time ago, not because of the money, but because I wanted to see like how much it's affected us. And I didn't know until that, that that is when we, we brought in in the United States public schools, which are government schools, which most people go to. And I, I went to a private school, but we still had to follow the mandate of the state or the federal government for what you learned. So even private school kids are not free of this. Mm -hmm. Um, And before that happened, kids were learning Greek in the United States. They were learning to read Hebrew. They were learning all these old languages that are not even taught in schools anymore. We don't even get secondary language in the United States until you're in high school. You know, we had Latin in like middle school, but then high school, I mean, when your brain's already pretty much developed around English. And so you can see for generations, this was the beginning of the 1900s. So for generations, they've been dumbing people down to follow those who know best. You know, whereas our great, 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 whatever grandparents could read Greek. And, you know, re- it's, it's unbelievable, like how, you know, I mean, I laugh about the missing books of the Bible. And if you gave me a, a key to the Vatican library, I would give it back to you because I don't speak Coptic Egyptian. I couldn't read the, these, these manuscripts if you paid me. But if I had been born 100 year, or over 100 years ago, maybe I could, you know, so it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And so that Stockholm Syndrome, they've made us come to the, you know, this place where we are dependent, but now we've realized that and we're becoming more resilient. And basically, like I said earlier, I, I feel like I'm laughing at them now because it's ridiculous. It's pathetic what they're trying this, now. This totally segues into my poem. Can I read my poem? Because <laughs> it's actually about me trying to integrate and process understanding how people can um, go into this Stockholm syndrome, how they can, how can they can sort of go into this dream spell. So um, would it be possible to share it? Uh, Catherine, with, is there? Oh, yes, I can share it here. Okay, so this is exactly what you're talking about. I do not want to see. I have eyes but do not want to see. I do not want to see that the world I lived in was not a benevolent one. The system I entrusted with my family and my care was not supporting me. I chose not to see the traffic, I won't say the whole word, of children that has been rife upon this planet as it is too hard to understand for a soul who cares. I will not see the judges, politicians, police as aggressors, for then it is up to me to take back the reins of control. I cannot see that medical and pharma were keeping me sick to fill their pockets with the profits of a sickened society, because then I must have been fooled. And I cannot agree to the role of a fool in this game. I do not want to hear the logical reasoning in people's opinions if it flies in the face of what I have always known. I cannot agree to an education system which dumbs the participant 
when I have allowed all my children to be the recipients. I have eyes but do not want to see that the world I embraced was a world ruled by corruption and control by the few and as part of the many, I allowed it to happen as I did not want to see. That was awesome. But we, we do see now and so we're doing something about it. Exactly. And I'm, I'm saying you take responsibility as well. We're not victims. We all chose to, to have that reality and now we're choosing differently. You know, the, the I was telling you that when I watched uh, Taylor doing her channeling with Stephanie, the entity that came through, which I'm not going to say what everybody knows, would know who it is, asked, uh, she, one of the questions she asked is, why, why are we here? And like, I, I took this kind of to meet everyone on the, on the planet right now. And he said, because you were chosen. And that goes back to the law of one, the raw material, where they say that too, that we were put here on this timeline for a particular reason because we could handle it and push that vibration mm. forward to bring this planet to where it needs to be. That's powerful. We are so mm. much more powerful than we believe we are. Well, don't you think also, Bryce, that if we were chosen to be here now, so were the black cats? Yeah. What's the, <laughs> it's, it's it's the law. law. It's the law. There needs to be a catalyst, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. It? It needs to be a. You need to. There have to be the duality. It has to be duality. Yeah. Otherwise, there'd be nothing. There'd be nothing to, nothing to, to push us forward, right? In three D. <laughs> well, and think about that. So yeah, three D is polarity, and then you go into four D where it's not polarized anymore. It's the positive or negative. But you think about like resistance, like resistant training. Like if you go and take an exercise class, you're going to have like resistance training, whether that's with weight or a strap or a ball, because that resistance creates friction friction creates change and there is a saying that whatever the devil will make for bad god will use for good mm -hmm. and so these bad guys maybe perhaps we were put here because we were vibrationally ready to take the resistance given to us by the bad system in order to propel us where we needed to be to bring help bring the plan i'm not just talking about us on the screen i'm talking about the people watching as well oh, it doesn't yeah. matter it doesn't matter if you have a platform or not because you're you're holding your vibration wherever you live so that that you know it's it's funny in the uh gospel of mary magdalene which i believe a lot of this uh timeline shift does come back to the magdalene the rise of the divine feminine to match the divine masculine because they have to be equal they can't one can't be higher than the other um she talks about the the wisdom of the wrathful person where she talks about mary magdalene talks about you know if if you have anger or wrath and you can't control it, it can be devastating. But if you are, have that friction of resistance and you know how to use it for the betterment, then you have the great awakening. Passion. And how beautiful is that? You have passion. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, I, think, I think we nest, we had to have the players on the other side in order to put us right here, right now in this, in this, in this timeline shift, you know? Yeah. Um, Without, yeah. without a, like a, without a, a Bond villain in a Bond film, the, it would just be James Bond picking up all the ladies and driving around in cars. I'm here, Dan. You probably would find it. Every time a helicopter, my children, they just don't think it's funny anymore. And I'm in hysterics. I'm the only person that ever laughs at my jokes. So every time a helicopter goes over, I say, Daniel Craig, come to get me again. <laughs> It doesn't stop. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not stopping. I've no idea. It was me married already. <laughs> make him sign. Only in this timeline, Medina, only in this timeline. In my timeline, he's not, and nor am I. So, you know, <laughs> I can make tools work for me when I want to. So, oh, dear. Yeah, on that thing. It's, oh, and, and it's really interesting how all these different things are happening. I mean, in the UK, you've got where you are, David. So Bryce is quite good situation we are we've been in a shit show and suddenly everything this week's changing everything um they're looking at releasing restrictions there's legal case going through queenies yeah there's a lot of crazy queenies things going stripping on all there. the titles off prince andrew that's in the news everywhere and and isn't it weird how quickly things can change for good and bad and this is this is this life we're living in isn't it it's like Things can shift so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. I was laughing when you said Queenie because I was standing in line yesterday at the grocery store, which, by the way, grocery prices are 
not mm. funny, but I'm like, if people can't see, like, this is unbelievable. But anyway, the uh, tabloid, uh, it was all talking about uh, Prince William and Kate's, like, marriage and how he has all these affairs and the dirty secrets. And I started laughing in line because we know that this is pretty much fiction at this point because these people are, you know. Um, but I'm like, wow, they are really really like slam dunking the royal family right now they're really preparing people to like not have this like lustful romanticized view of this really screwed up family you know like like wow that you know when you when you see it like it's when you see it, you can't unsee it because we never never had those type of tabloids about the royal family here in the united states like never i mean it was always like oh the queen's turning this age or oh this or that you know it was never um showing their dirty laundry really so that's and exciting boy, boy is it being aired at the moment and i shouldn't laugh at other people's misfortune but i'm going to <laughs> God, <no. laughs> are they people though like are they actually people so <laughs> i'm not that spiritually advanced i'm afraid so yeah i'm working that's a work in progress so yeah it's interesting isn't it david because you were saying about how you're going in and and this has been the thing for everyone watching this it's just every single week we talk or day, everyone across the globe is going through this yo-yo and up and down, isn't it? So it's a roller coaster. Hold on tight, everyone. It's so illogical too, you know, like it, here we've got um, apparently more cases than ever spreading, you know, and yet they've just opened the border, you know, where, where we are yeah. that's been closed so for eight months. It's like nothing makes sense and it's like, where has logic gone? It's just flying straight out the window. There's no common sense for for a lot of people. It's not common. So uh, it's just um, yeah, that 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 really um, flabbergasts me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That it's uh, it's really crazy. It's like everything that you would think would be the opposite. Like we have no cases really, and they've mm -hmm. just done what they've done, and they're doing all the, all the stuff. And the funny thing mm -hmm. is, is like like they. Uh, They've pretty much made everything off limits to the to the unjabbed, mm. including bottle shops. Like we have, uh, you know, we don't buy alcohol in the supermarkets here. You have to go to a special store, and you can't do that even. And you do go to the bottle shop. There's like three people in there ever, you know. Yeah. Yet you can go to the supermarket where there's loads of people. You can go to retail stores and where there's potentially more people. But you can't go to the bottle shops. It's it's just stupid. Mm. Nothing makes no any sense. <laughs> And well, it's right. Sorry, Carol. I say common sense isn't so common. So <laughs> I know. And it's weird over here because things are getting better. But for, for my own, and this is only my own personal bubble of, of close friends and family, everyone's been ill. Everyone's been ill over England with what in, in previous times we would call the flu. Touch wood, the people I know things. Although um I do know someone very good who's my age has just dropped out of a heart attack or start jogging completely suddenly out of the blue, fittest guy you've ever met. Um, but, you know, this is what I mean. There's, 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 uh, there's just no common sense. Um, Boris or Bojo, as we call him, oh, my God, they're getting a slating at the moment. So I know it's it's not a nice thing to do when you sort of say how the mighty have fallen, but we in the UK at the moment we have really reached that crescendo where it's like you're pushing them all humpty dumpties are all being pushed off the wall and they're actually smashing not bouncing this time <laughs> um so you know that we might have some scrambled eggs to talk about next week that's for sure <laughs> And uh, I think the, ten the tennis situation in Australia is doing the same thing, Catherine, you know, nah. with everyone what's oh, going yeah. on. It's just been deported, which is really going to be triggering a lot of the mass sort of um, people that watch all, all the sporting events and they're under that sort of dream spell. They're going to be watching this. And this is a whole different sort of uh, group of, of people that, yeah. that perhaps, uh, were quite mainstream so that that's going to be very awakening and activating for a lot of them which is really excellent for Australia I think and the world even it's triggering the world that was when I nice. was Australia, it was with the Australian I went my sister was playing in the junior open and that's where we why we spent so much time there and I will say at least the United States tennis is is a very like upper upper class sport it's a country club sport and we see a lot of people in that demographic being highly over educated to the point where they can't they've lost that control of their own thought and so you're right they're hitting that i didn't even think about that like that's pretty that's pretty uh 
Good, good thought, Medina. That's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> I thought I had an awakening today because I was speaking to Shanti about it, and it was really fascinating because her and I have very different outlooks on that particular situation. And I was I gave myself a bit of a pat on the back because I didn't react to the different opinion at all. It was very much well. That's really interesting, isn't it? But but the one thing it's doing is getting everyone talking about it, and everyone's got an opinion about it. Um, mm. which is a really good thing. It's really getting a lot of debate. And you do have to applaud whichever side of the fence this guy's on. You have to applaud these people in the public life. We all know quite a few of them that have really put themselves out there to be almost like the sacrificial lamb or the hero, depending which way it turns out. Right. Yeah. The, oh, the hero version is now that he looks a lot like Tesla and they've got the same face because he's talked about how he really admires he you know, everything. Tesla did so. So it's interesting now. This uh, idolatry that human beings do when when someone does the right thing, they start putting them up on this pedestal, and then they go high up on the pedestal, and then you, there's only one way you can go after that, which is down. So it's like it's a funny thing that people do. Did you guys see Mr. T's speech? How that had yes. Sarah to Sarah on the on the thing. That oh, was really we interesting. Were, we were taught, and I actually I. I I was on David Zubel, I'm on David Zubel show every Tuesday and he played a clip, which I will email to you guys when we're done because we cannot play it on, um, on YouTube, but basically confirming a lot of stuff in, in his own words that I'll send to you guys. I'll send it to email. And, um, um, if you guys are watching, just go to David Zubel's platform and you can see it, because we can't, but it confirmed everything about quantum, all that kind of stuff. So it's very exciting. Wow. So I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, I really can't wait to see that. And we'll make sure you've all got access. We can't put the links below this video, guys. So go to Zay David Zublitz, um Dark Outpost, and yeah. you'll see it there. Then if we manage to, we might put it on our various Telegram channels. But please don't ask us to post the link here. Yeah. But we'll be. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Your Telegram channels. Telegram. I, I don't have, I don't have yeah. a Telegram channel. <laughs> go to Catherine's. Or you guys, I know you have one. Medina, do you have one at Telegram? Yes. Yes, leave it. Yeah. Arise in the chat. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll send it to you guys on email and y'all can post it on telegrams. And um, if you guys send me your telegram links, I'll make sure they're in the description box. So, mine's <laughs> really tiny. I haven't told anyone about it, but oh, <laughs> join it. You're out for your so. <laughs> oh, I think, um, you know, despite, uh, you know, various things that are sort of happening in all our sort of individual lives, it, it's, I, I think this is just, to me, it feels such an upbeat time at the moment. Yes, there are some terrible things that, you know, are happening to people we know, um, but it just feels feels on the cusp of um, moving on to the next stage, certainly on a, a personal level and certainly in the conversations I've been having. Do you guys feel that too? 100%. Yeah, people are, people are ready to, to evolve and move on. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's just the raising in the frequency, I can feel all this light coming through and all this high energy, which is just sort of lifting, it feels like it's lifting me up. And it's and it's aside from all the all the information that I'm hearing in the world, it's just this like um when you tune into the feeling of the universe, the the energy, the the Schumann resonance, the the, the Mother Earth, it's just like wow, I can I just feel excited by that. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. So we'll go around the table. Bryce, any parting words for you before we finish? Um, you know, I, I agree with you guys. I feel like it feels almost like we're getting to that Christmas Eve, like a kid at Christmas where some, we know there's going to be something's going to happen. But don't hold on to expectate or, you know, expectations are not often reality. Just trust that this is a divine plan. And there is a verse in the Bible where I think it's Jesus that says, Joshua says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. So we know that times are rough for people and their, their emotions are going up and down. But if you just keep that little bit of faith, nothing will be impossible for you. And we're, we're all going to get through this together. This is, we're all in, no one's in, we're all in this collectively. So you're not alone. Even though you might feel alone, you're not alone. We're all in this together. Yeah, Medina, what about you? Um, just, I think that people are really having a lot of their um, inner uh, 
sort of un, unhealed stuff coming up at the moment. You know, their they're perhaps their karmic stuff or their soul wounding. So just you know, use different techniques to be able to um, acknowledge and um, validate the feelings that are coming up, and 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 work on transmuting that because it's coming up for a reason. Because we you can't go forward while you're holding a lot of baggage, and so as this stuff comes up, do whatever you can to be able to um, transmute these energies and, and and don't be hard on yourself don't judge yourself or criticize yourself for these things that are coming up but just allow them to bubble up to the surface and then use different techniques you know you, you could do a session with someone like myself or you could do meditations or go for walks in nature or listen to high vibrational music or whatever you need to do for you to transmute these energies that are coming up for everyone in in you know big chunks at the minute too so just be prepared that if that stuff is coming up it's come up for a reason and just honor it and allow it to to be able to be released brilliant and what about you david i've been listening to this this really old mp3 i don't know how old it is but it sounds like it's one of those it's a it's an mp3 on abundance and and getting rich and you know if it I'm sure you've all listened to certain things like that before and it's always more so about the mindset and your energy more than it is the mechanics of the situation uh, and one of the quotes the guy said which i can't remember exactly but i'll paraphrase he said don't get don't get despondent or pissed off at uh corrupt governments because the the governments are acting in a way that fit the collective at that point in time you know movements or the system will always move in the flow of the collective and it, and now that people are demanding something new, we can see it. That's going to happen. You, know, you can't. You can't stay there the entire time because if it does, people are just going to take it upon themselves, and they already have to make the change. So you can't stop it. You know, whatever's happening now, it can't be stopped. But it does happen in its own time. So I guess be patient, but don't really. Yeah, don't dwell on if things aren't happening like we're, we're going backwards in my city compared to what's happening over in the UK, and I don't care. You know, because it's not going to be forever. You know, so I think that that's that's something very important for us to all to remember. It's just to really be patient, but do the things that you want to do. You know, don't don't uh, you know. And I was I was going to be guilty of that before. I was like, when when this all ends, I'm going to do the podcast. But then I I met somebody who I interviewed for the first episode, and she's like, she got some uh, messages from the, pe the the beings that she speaks to, and she said to me, they're telling you not to wait. So just don't wait. Yeah, and that's that's my message is just sort of, um, you know, go out where depending, I know you guys in Australia are just about to start your day, I'm just about to go to bed, you know, wherever, wherever you're at, um, the universe always says yes, be really conscious what you're asking for, be really conscious what you're asking for, don't be attached to the, perhaps the time scales around it, but you know, we don't know, so I've had a, a, a good friend that, that's dropped dead suddenly. We, we do not know what's around the corner. So really make the most of sort of every minute that we've got in this experience and um, connect with lovely friends like you guys. So thank you so much to all of you. And thank you so much to everyone that's hopefully going to take the time to listen to this. And um, who knows where we'll be next week. Could be anywhere. On Mars, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> All right, lovely. Thanks, guys. We'll speak next week, hopefully. Bye. Bye. See you later.